These bullets are impacting sideways. What the hell? Let's talk about it. Hey folks, Gary here with Paramount. So this past weekend we had a tactical carbine course and there were some things that happened there on the range that I thought would be fun to share with you. So, you know, as you can see on this target right here, we have several rounds that have impacted uh, on this target, basically perpendicular. They've turned almost 90 degrees, completely unstabilized. Now, what you don't know is this was at three to five yards. So this is very close. So I wanted to take a look at, you know, why that happens and kind of diagnose what's going on there so that, you know, if you ever experience this, you understand what's going on besides just kind of fun to jump into, right? So, so this cycle right, right here is the culprit. Uh, this is a PWS Mark 114. It's one of their first ones that they came out with. Uh, if you're not familiar with PWS, primary weapon systems, uh, they offer a long stroke uh, piston driven gun. And I bought this gun in, I believe it was either late 2013 or, or 2014. And I can tell you folks, this has been my main uh, rifle. This thing has just been a workhorse. Um, I ran this gun super hard between 2014 and now. I, I'd be willing to bet there's at least 30,000 rounds through this, and that's being extremely conservative. Uh, you have to understand, number one, I run courses ever since 2015. I was doing a lot of shooting with this before we opened up Paramount in 2015. 2015 was our first training year. I was doing a lot of shooting with this prior to that, uh, and this has been my main workhorse of a rifle. This has been my primary rifle primary weapon system, right? Uh, but on top of that, I've also let students use this, especially at, you know the first few years that we were running Paramount. Um, this was the gun that I often let students use. I just knew that we wouldn't be any issues with it. Uh, so literally on a weekend, there could be you know uh, 12 to 1500 rounds put through this rifle on a weekend, multiple times a year. Uh, you know, again, going back all the way, you know, we're looking at almost seven years now, six or seven years. This has been just a super reliable rifle. I can't recommend PWS enough. Uh, I like this long stroke system, which we might take a look at. I probably need to do a full review on this rifle. But what we're talking about primarily is again, what's going on with this thing. So. Basically, what it comes down to is if you haven't figured this out or you didn't see from the thumbnail right away, if you didn't think, hey, that barrel is shot out, uh, that's what's going on with this, right? So what I want to do is kind of a deeper dive into what it looks like when a barrel is shot out. Obviously, you'll start to see unstabilized rounds like that, which, you know, again, at three to five yards, that's pretty extreme. And, and actually, I didn't even expect it. I didn't expect that, to be honest with you. And it went from zeroing just an hour or so prior to that. We zeroed. It grouped perfect group just fine. Uh, and then we went into uh, shooting up close, three to five yards, uh, and then we started see seeing those rounds hit perpendicular keyhole, uh, as a lot of people referred to. But, you know, again, it went from shooting just fine to not. But what I want to do is kind of show you what the throat of this thing looks like. Now, I will tell you, I've had lots, this is the first AR, uh, or M4, or, you know, again, AR-15 variant that I've seen with the barrel shot out. Um, I've had lots of clients come to me and say, hey, Gary, I think this barrel shot out. And, you know, with an AR, uh, they only had like, you know, five to 10,000 rounds. And I was suspicious of that. And basically what I did was I did a real good cleaning of it. I removed all the copper fouling out of there. And suddenly that gun was shooting like it was brand new. And that's one of the things that a lot of people um, don't understand you know, even long range shooters, as a long range shooter, you're used to uh, making sure there's no fouling in that barrel, including the copper fouling, because that copper fouling starts to build up in the lands and grooves, but we don't think about that when it comes to AR-15s. And I've seen lots and lots of folks out there that thought their barrel was shot out, when in reality, they had just built up enough copper in those lands and grooves to where it just wasn't stabilizing, where it wasn't biting that bullet and stabilizing and spinning that bullet enough. So again, about once a year, depending on how much you use it, but I'll tell you, about every six months, 
personally, I take my AR-15s and I clean them just like I would a precision rifle. I make sure I get all the carbon out of there and I make sure that I get rid of all that copper fouling on there. And you'll be surprised at how long these barrels will actually last. They last a really long time, well beyond you know 10,000 rounds typically. And of course, there's lots of different variables in that, right? What type of barrel it is, how, what the quality of the barrel, the type of ammo that you're running through it, all of that other good stuff. I have not met too many AR-15 owners that have actually shot their barrel out. Now, if we were really testing this for accuracy, um, I'm sure probably 5,000 rounds ago, if I was sitting there doing grouping drills at 100 yards, I would have started to see, uh, you know, the shot groups of this thing open up. And, and that's usually where you see, and that's the thing, when I've rebarreled precision guns in the past, uh, we're not getting to a point to where, you know, the rounds are completely unstabilized. We're starting to look at rebarreling those when instead of, you know, a half MOA group, it's now shooting one and a quarter MOA group. And that's kind of indicative of that barrel being shot out as opposed to something a little bit more extreme that we saw with this type of, you know, fighting rifle that we have here. Mainly just for fun. What I wanted to do is we're gonna actually open this thing up, throw a bore scope down this. Um, I already have, I'll tell you right now, I've already kind of looked at the lands and grooves in this. It's probably not as dramatic as you think, but you can definitely see some indications of this barrel being shot out. The thing that you really need to know is that all barrels are shot out from the breech, right? That's This is right here in this first couple of inches is where you're going to see a lot of erosion of those lands and grooves. And you know, by the time that you get to the end of the barrel, a lot of those lands and grooves still look brand new. But uh, again, this is where that stabilization clearly occurs. And even though the lands and grooves are nice and tight up here, uh, it's still not stabilizing the bullets. Just good information to have so that you understand what's going on with that. So just to put things in perspective, this weekend we had a tactical carbine course. Uh, it was a level one course. We always start off zeroing, so we zero all the rifles first. It was a brand new shooter that was using this gun. He'd never shot an AR-15 before, but we set him down. We taught him through the fundamentals of marksmanship. He's actually grouping really well. Uh, you know, he probably did about a half inch group, three shot group, 25 yards, uh, just zeroing the rifle. So that was good enough. And then we got up a few minutes later, we were up shooting up close, doing ready up drills. And uh, suddenly we saw these rounds hitting sideways, which was which was pretty remarkable and uh, kind of shocking to be honest with you. But it went from shooting fairly good to again, not so. So anyways, let's take this apart. We're gonna throw the bore scope down there, take a look at it. Uh, I will also grab another fairly new rifle and we'll kind of compare those lands and grooves uh, just after that breach and uh, kind of see what's going on with that. So let's get after it. All right, so um, I was actually just gonna disassemble this and put it back up here. Uh, but for many of you, you probably have never seen a PWS, the long strokes system. I really like this system. It keeps it, everything nice and cool. It's very similar to an AK-47, but we have a long stroke piston system there. Um, man, this, this gun, you can put a thousand rounds through it and there'll be hardly any dirt or debris on the uh, bolt itself. Um, Again, it's worked really well. There's definitely a little bit of a downside when it comes to piston actuated guns because of the proprietary parts. You know, what's nice about the direct impingement guns is that if something breaks, you can literally go down to the local gas station just about and get new parts for it. With these piston guns, uh, there tends to be a little bit more proprietary parts that you need to be concerned about. But I will say, again, I've had no major breakages, function issues, or anything else, or any parts that I've replaced on this gun in the last, you know, since since I bought it in 2013 or 2014. So uh, it's been super reliable. I've got nothing but positive things to say about these rifles. Uh, a big fan. Uh, I definitely plan on getting a few more in the future, but I'll probably do a review on these or maybe get a brand new one uh, and review one of their newer models. But anyways, great gun. If you're interested in a piston ran gun, I do prefer these over short stroke piston systems uh, for a bunch of different reasons. But again, overall, great gun. Um, nothing negative to say about them. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a bore scope through this rifle, but also through a newer rifle. That other rifle has less than, I don't know, two or 3,000 rounds. Not that many through there. You can definitely see a, a big difference. Um, I will say in the bore scope though, the, the, the contrast between the two isn't as much as I thought it would be. It's, it's a little bit more subtle when you're looking at the bore scope, the way that the bore scope views those lands and grooves. Now, I will tell you, if you hold both of these, the new rifle and this rifle up and just look with your naked eye through the tube, that I feel like you can see a much bigger difference. You can see how clear those lands and grooves are on the newer rifle, whereas this, things start to run together a little bit more. There's definitely clearly much more erosion. It's easier to see that. And I, I try to get a good camera view of that, but it just it just wouldn't come out. So uh, we'll take a look at it with the bore scope and kind of go from there. All right. So we're going down through here. 
right here we're in the chamber all right we see our chamber nothing crazy there and right here is where we get to some free bore area and this is actually where you can start to see this is a little long all right, this area right here, we should have we should actually have started to see those lands and grooves. They should have started back here, but it's actually about another quarter of inch or so before we start to see those lands and grooves. Right here, there's just very little difference between the elevation of those lands and grooves. And I'm trying to get to an area where I can try to catch the edge of those lands and grooves, but it's just hard to do. Now, as we push this down further, we can see, the, and right here's our gas port. If we push this down further, all right, we can start to see a much larger contrast between those lands and grooves. You start to see how nice and tight and sharp those edges are, whereas back here, it's just lacking that, right? They're just much smoother, and there's very little contrast between the lands and grooves themselves. So this is where that this barrel is shot out. It's once we get out to it toward the muzzle, again, you'd be hard pressed to see a difference between this and a, and a fairly new rifle. I mean, those lands and grooves are fairly nice and sharp. Preparing for this so that you could see good detail of the lands and grooves in here, I cleaned this rifle just like I would at cleaning a precision rifle. And up here in this video, if you haven't checked that out, go check that out. But I lay out exactly how to clean a precision rifle correctly, what products to use, uh, and exactly how to get it done without any nonsense. So go check out that video, I think you'll enjoy it. But here again, you can see a lot of detail in the sharpness of those edges of those lands and grooves. When we get back here to that throat, we see an excessive amount of free bore, and free bore is the area between the chamber and where the lands and grooves actually start, where the, that bullet's ogive connects with those lands and grooves. And there's an excessive amount of free bore because, again, those lands and grooves probably started out right here, all right, where those streaks are. That was probably at one time an actual groove, but it has just been eroded so much to where there's almost nothing left there. So. Excessive amount of free bore there. And that's where, again, those first couple inches is where it all happens, where that erosion takes place, where that barrel is, is shot out from. All right, so that was the PWS. You can take a look at that. I'll throw up the other one here in just a second by itself, and then we'll probably put them up together as a uh, kind of a comparison between the two. All right, so what we have here is a F4 Defense. Uh, again, these are also great rifles. Uh, huge fan of these as well. As far as a uh, direct impingement, I can't recommend them enough. And we're gonna see the difference. This is a fairly low round count again, probably somewhere between you know 1,000, 2,000, something like that. But you can see the chamber here and look how much, you can see the freeboard area. This is what looks right. This is where that neck casing ends and we can see where that we can see where the lands and grooves that rifling begins. And that free bore area, look how much shorter that is compared to uh, the PWS. That is, and you can even see here, there's a much, look how sharp, as I turn that, just within the first inch or so of the barrel, you can see those lands and grooves are nice and sharp, nice and tight, but you can see the difference. Right here is where that neck casing would end, and then right here is where those that ogive would make contact with the rifling itself. But that free bore area is much, much shorter, and you can just tell that this barrel is fairly new compared to uh, what's going on with that PWS barrel. You can really see the difference between that free bore area and where those lands and grooves start, and how much erosion is actually taking place on that PWS rifle. So anyways, <clears throat> While there's definitely some other issues that can cause rounds to look like this, uh, usually it has to do with bullet weight, uh, rifle twist, and some other things. It is very rare. This is again, this is the only AR style rifle that I've seen that was the barrel itself was indeed shot out. If you shoot your AR a lot, you know, at least once a year, clean that thing really good, just like you would a precision rifle. Check out our video. I cover how to clean a precision rifle. I want you to clean this rifle just like that. Make sure you're getting in there, getting rid of all the carbon in there and use the bore protect products that I talk about and then get in there and use a good copper cleaner and get rid of all that copper. And that will keep that copper from building up in those lands and grooves. Because again, a lot of guns that people or a lot of barrels that people think are shot out, they're not, all right? They're just filled up with copper. And if you get rid of that, you'll, you'll, you're 
you're going to be shooting like brand new again. So uh, overall, just wanted to share that with everybody. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a good uh, teachable moment, you know, as Barack Obama would say, um, and just a lot of fun to share. I, I, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I just love gun nerd stuff like that. So I thought uh, I thought many of you would enjoy it as well. All right, folks, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was informative. Uh, and, you know, while shout out barrels and guns and gear and all that stuff's great, we're really about training. So make sure you go to ParamountTactical.com. Go check out our upcoming training schedule. Uh, check out our tactical carbine courses, long range courses, med courses, whatever it is. We'd love to have you come out and do some training with us. We'd love to meet you in person. Uh, any of the gear or items that we sell on our website are items that we've actually tested and we believe in. So uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, uh, so you can see more videos like this. But until next time, stay armed, stay ready, and we'll talk to you soon. Coming, but I'm prepared